Hi, this is Chris with Launch Code, and in this video, we're going to see how we can employ enums um, within our application as a model property. So let me create an enum, and I want this enum to represent the different types of events that might be stored in my application. So I'm going to be in my models package. I'm going to right click and create new uh, Java class, and I can select enum down below, and I can say that I want this to be called event type. Yes, I do want to add that to version control. So uh, recall that an enum is just a special type of Java class that can only have one of a set of predefined values. So my enum in particular, I want it to represent different types of events. So um, some of those different types, I need to define the different types that I want to be able to use at the top of my class. Uh, a conference would be one. Um, I could use a, uh, let's see, a meetup. How about a workshop? and then maybe just a social event. So these are different types of, of tech events or coding events that you might encounter. And uh, aside from that, I also want to have uh, the ability to have a different display name for each of these values. I don't want to use this, you know, the all caps is the, uh, the, the variable name, the field name here in um, my event type. I don't want to use that particular name when displaying this to the user. So let me create uh, a private final string display name. And then I'll create a constructor that initializes that. Actually, I can auto-generate this, can I? Let's do that. Go to generate uh, constructor with my display name. There we go. And I also need a getter. So generate a getter for my display name. I'm not going to create a setter because this is final. Once it's initialized, it cannot be changed. Okay, so now this class has a constructor, it has a display name property. In order to associate a specific display name with each of my enum values, I can basically call the constructor up here when I define the values. So by putting in a string after the enum name, this says call the constructor with this specific value. Okay. And so this will uh, create four different types for my enum type, or sorry, event type enum, and uh, I can use those elsewhere. So basically what I'm going to be able to do is as I create an event, I'm going to be able to say this event's a conference, this event is a meetup, and so on. Okay, so to use these with my events, I need to create a property on the event class. So I'll come into the event class, and I'll say private type event type. Sorry, event, got that backwards, private event type type. There we go. And uh, let's see, I need to add that to the constructor as well. And then I need uh, getter and setter. So I'll come down below and I'll generate getters and setters for the type field. Okay, that looks good. Um, and I don't really need any validation on this because it's uh, it's an enum, so it's already restricted to the, the four values that are in here. Okay, so that's great. Now I need to be able to display the different enum types, the different enum values in a form, and I also need to be able to uh, make sure an object is created with the right values. So let's go to the event controller. The first thing I want to do is make sure the form is displayed with a drop down that contains the given types. So I'm going to go to my display create event form and add a new attribute to the model. And I'm going to say events type dot values. Okay. And this will return uh, an array of the four different values that live or that my enum type um, event type, sorry, I keep switching up the words event and enum, it's even e floating around. Uh, this will return an array of the four different values that exist for that enum type. And then I can then use them in the, in the, um, in the, the template to render a dropdown. So let's go to the template. This is my create template. And let's see, I'm gonna add to the bottom. So let me create a new form group, div class equals form group. And then within that, I'm gonna make a, uh, let's see, a label. And let's say uh, type. And within that, I wanna make a select. Okay, so I'm gonna do a couple things here. I want to first say that this is a th colon field, just as I was doing before. 
and I want to say that this is uh, the field event. This input corresponds to the field event dot type. That's going to make sure that the name property is generated properly. And then within here, I need to create some options. So I'm going to create an option tag, and um, I'm going to make this a loop. I want this option tag repeated once for each element in types. So I will say th colon each equals uh, type in, sorry, type colon, dollar sign curly brace, and types is the thing, I, I think that's the name I gave. Yeah, my array of different event type enum values. So that should loop over this uh, once for each item in that array. And what do I need to do here? I need to specify uh, some things. I need to specify, oh, what do I need to specify? A name. So I need to say th colon name equals, well, actually the name will be specified on the select. And you say th colon value is going to be the type dot display name. And uh, let's see, th colon text. Actually, this is going to be the type. I got these backwards. So let's just say type. th colon value is the type. Remember, value is what gets submitted to the server. We want that to be the actual enum value. The text is what's going to be displayed to the user. That should be the display name. There we go. Okay, I think that looks correct. So now let's just uh, review this, uh, make sure we have everything we need. So we're going to have a new select element. It's associated with the label. This select element is going to have its ID and name attributes set by using the th colon field um, attribute here. And I've tied that to the events.type field. Then I'm going to have a loop here and it's going to repeat an option element once for every type in my array of types. And remember, this is the array of all possible uh, enum types, all possible event types. And so for each one of these, I want to create an option element. The value of that option element should just be the type itself. The text of that, the display text, should be the display name. So this would be your sort of all caps version. This would be your friendly, more human uh, readable version. And um, that should do it. Now, let's just confirm that we don't need to do anything on post handler. In the post handler, I have this event object being passed in via model binding. Okay, so as long as I have the uh, name property set correctly, this the event or sorry, the type attribute of this event will be set correctly, and so I shouldn't need to update anything within this um, within this uh, controller method. All right, and let's start up the application and see if it works. All right, so we'll go to our web browser. We'll go to our form. And I have a type here, but it's, uh, it's actually empty. So something has gone wrong here. Let's go back and look at our template and see what we did. I did not uh, give this attribute a name. There we go. So let me stop my application. And as I'm doing that, I'm also reminded that there's one more thing I forgot to do. So uh, just to recap why that failed, this, this didn't have any values in it because when I passed in the array of values here, I didn't give it a label. And so I was trying to refer to something with this label, but nothing with that label existed. So that's why that was empty. Um, the other thing I just recalled that I forgot is that um, while I create new events with a type, I'm not displaying that type anywhere. So let's go to the event listing and let's add a new column called type. And then I uh, will make a TD down below in my loop. TH colon text equals curly brace events dot type. And I want this to be like the, the user friendly one. So I'll say event dot type dot display email. Sorry, display name, and uh, there, that should do it. Okay, now let's restart our application. Okay, so refresh our form, and we see that our dropdown is properly rendered at least. Let's look at the uh, web dev tools here. 
and inspect our drop down to see if the values look okay. So inside my select, yes, yeah, so I've got value equals, and then I have the enum version, the all caps version, and then inside the text is going to be the display name, which is the user friendly version. And we see name is equal to type, and ID is equal to type. That's because that's the field name of the uh, of the event type field within the event class. Okay, so that all looks great. Let's go ahead and try to create something. Let's say uh, code with pride and just create a fake email and we'll say that this is a meetup. Okay, that looks good. We'll hit create. And on my event listing, I have the name, description, email, and the type listed there. Let's just do it one more time with a different type. Let's say WWDC. It's Apple's developer conference. I'm making up this email as well. That is a conference. Okay, we'll create it. And uh, something wacky happened there. We lost an event, didn't we? And the first clue here is that the ID of this event is, is zero, which uh, that really shouldn't be the case. Let's look at our event class. Notice that the first ID, the very first object, should be 1, and then it should go up from there. So something is wrong with my ID generating logic, at least. Um, and I think, you know what, it's right here. So let me stop IntelliJ here. I'm going to have to stop the application in IntelliJ. I'm going to have to make some code changes. So this this empty constructor, this no R constructor, is actually getting called during model binding. So let's go and look at why that's the case. So notice this constructor does not set an ID. Uh, and since the ID field is an integer, if it's not set, the default value is zero. Since it's a primitive field, it doesn't, it can't be null. Its default value is zero. So that's probably why I'm getting this zero. Let's, let's, let me show you though why that default constructor, that no arg constructor rather, is being called here. When model binding happens, um, on the way in, the data from the request is uh, shoved into the object here, this event object. And so the way that Spring does this, and this is a pattern that's used in a lot of other places, we'll see it when we get to um, you know, working with databases and object relational mapping using Hibernate. The way that Spring creates this event object is it will call, uh, if, it's, if it's available, it will call the uh, noarg constructor, and then it will call setters to set the specific fields for that uh, class. So um, if we have a no R constructor, it better do uh, any other initialization that we want done as well. And in this case, it should be setting the, uh, the, the ID. So let me go ahead and fix this. There's a pretty simple fix. I'm going to cut these two lines that initialize the ID. I'm going to put them down here. Uh, I could have copied and pasted, but there's a slightly better way to do it. So um, I just removed them from the primary constructor, which takes all these, these uh, values in. And what I'm going to do there is I'm just going to call, at the very top, I'm going to call this. So remember that calling this is the same as calling a different constructor from within the same class. And so that should always be first. If you're calling a different constructor, you should always do it at the top of a given constructor. And so what happens now is uh, when I call the noR constructor, I still get an ID. And if I call the regular constructor, the noR constructor will be used to generate that ID. And I think that should that should fix our issue. This means that now when this model object is bound here and it's created, uh, the no argument constructor is called and I should get an ID. So let's go ahead and restart and hopefully that works now. That was kind of a, a tricky one to, to, to come across here. Let's, uh, okay, so we're back here. We'll go to create event and we'll try this again. Okay, so ID 2. That's a little odd, but I'll explain that in a second. We'll go to create event again and make sure that we don't have the same issue as we did last time. Uh, here we go. Cool. Okay, so that got rid of that issue. Notice though that my IDs are only even numbers, and that might look weird to you as well, but this actually makes sense because Let's go back and look at our controller. Our controller, when it renders the form, it creates a new uh, 
event object, which is empty except for the ID. Since we added that ID generating logic into the noarg constructor, this event itself, which is just being used to help render the form, this event itself will actually have uh, an ID as well. So, um, you know, the first time it'll have ID one. Then when we save that event, they'll have um, the, the event from that form that will have ID two. Then when we render the form again, that empty event will have ID three. The saved event will have ID four, and so on. And uh, we don't. That's that's fine. We don't really care what these IDs are as long as they're unique. Um, and so that's just perfectly fine. All right, great. So now we have a pretty robust model here with some good behavior and some validation. And so, um, yeah, we're pretty happy with the state of our application now. And uh, we'll be getting to databases soon so we can persist this data uh, uh, indefinitely.